Hey guys, it's me, Nikki B, the elegant and regal one. How you guys doing today? Welcome to Say What Wednesdays. I am your host again, Nikki B. Immediately after me, we have DJ Hot Rod. Y'all, this brother can spin some tunes and he like to drop knowledge at the same time. Also, shout out to our founder and CEO, DJ Marvin Banks, who makes this platform possible. A big welcome to DJ Pat, um, DJ, oh uh, my gosh, DJ Harry Houdini, DJ DCR, DJ Ace, DJ Vision, DJ Velocity, DJ, um, oh my gosh, did I forget anybody? Well, you know what, if I did, DJ uh, Ray, DJ Ray, I, I want to make sure I didn't forget any of you guys. Keep it locked to Z100 to beat. Listen, this family of ours, we keep y'all moving and grooving to the wee hours of the day and night. We have everything. We have jazz. Rap, hip hop, club, everything, house, you name it, Z100 The Beat has it. Now, today's uh, African American black history fact. You guys know all about, you know, Rosa Parks. Y'all know Dr. Martin Luther King. You guys know everybody who's uh, been, been circulated with black history as regards to the civil rights movement. But you guys don't know, there's more, there are a lot of other key players. So, this fact has been brought by uh, Greg Pruitt, and he says today's show uh, should be known uh, black American history fact is brought by Constance Baker Motley. She was a key strategist of the African American Civil Rights Movement. She's a judge, lawyer, state senator, and borough president of Manhattan, New York. We must know where we come from to know where we are going. So guys, enjoy. Look her up, Constance Baker Motley. We got to know our history so we know where we're going. Guys, let me tell you. If you want to know anything else, look up the Reconstruction Era. Before, I don't know if you guys knew, we used to hold uh, political offices. We had positions of power right after slavery was abolished. Look that up. Let me tell y'all, once you start going to digging in, into our history, let me tell you, it make your blood boil, but it also empowers you to see how, how our ancestors fought. You know what I'm saying? We were doctors, lawyers, judges. We were a whole lot of things before 1619. But I want you to go and dig deeper into black history. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start. Now, um, I know you guys are thinking open messenger. Yes, Mr. Bendross. So Eric says what we're talking about today. We're talking about the marriage bed. Now we're talking about how you keep that marriage bed alive. But if you don't know if your marriage bed is stale, I'm going to give you some, I'm going to show you if it's stale. We're going to talk about some things. I want you guys, if you don't take away anything from this, I want you to take away to make time for love. Regardless of what you do, always make time for love. That's your best friend, your boo thing, your hookup. However y'all met, y'all together, you guys are one. Always keep it fresh, keep it tight. Baby, keep it all right, all right? So here we go. We're going to talk about reasons why your marriage could be born. Why is that bed born? Let me tell you. The Bible says keep that marriage bed undefiled. Don't you know what you bring to that marriage bed can make it undefiled? If you want anal and she wants oral, 69 and figure it out. But always be in agreement what you guys do on that marriage bed. Always. Relationship feeling a little stale. Here's how to rev things back up. Get the rev, you know, get the motor going. So y'all know at the beginning of marriage, everything feels new. It feels fresh. It feels exciting. Like, oh my God, I'm married to my best friend. You've got the romantic date nights planned weeks in advance, and you may begin, you may uh, begin future annoyances that's little endearing. Oh my God, he left his stuff on the floor. Oh, that's so cute. I'm going to show him, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna work this out. We're going to do this thing together. We're going to work it out. But unfortunately, that honeymoon stage won't last forever. Eventually, things are going to simmer down, and you might even find yourself feeling, well, you know, a little bit bored. You may get tired of looking at the same old behind sachet past you, tired of looking at that same pair, of, you know, in the man's down below. You may get tired of all that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some tips uh, to see um, your marriage isn't doomed. All it means is that you might need to devote a little more time and energy into making your marriage hot sizzling, 
spicy, sexy. Let me tell y'all, ladies, it's okay to buy 50 11 dozen wigs because look, that man back there don't know who he gonna wake up to. It is okay. But uh, I want you to discover why you might be feeling bored in your marriage along with some tips to tell you, listen, it's normal to feel bored in a marriage, but there's ways around it. There's ways to resurrect your marriage. There's ways to keep it nice and tight. So the number one tip, number one uh, reason your marriage may be stale is you stop asking your partner questions. As time go by, you might feel like you know everything there is to know about your man. You know his favorite color. You know his favorite food. You know his shoe size. You know his likes and dislikes. You know everything about him. But they've still got more layers, I promise you. I can't guarantee that you'll probably think definite, differently than the way you did four or five years ago. But the same thing goes for your partner, which means you should never stop asking them questions and getting to know them. Don't you know Eric and I have been together uh, six years, right? There's still some things that I'm finding out about him. There's still some things that I did not know about him. It's like, what? Oh, okay. Because, you know, we have full disclosure. We tell each other everything. And even in marriage, when you tell each other everything, sometimes things people forget. Older you, sometimes people, when you're older, you forget a lot of things. But, you know, ask questions. This is my sin. The worst, the worst thing you could ever do is have somebody else tell you something about your own husband or your own wife. But ask questions. Don't be afraid to say, hey, you know what, baby? I want to know this. Or, or not just how your day going, but how can I be of service to you? How can I love on you? Baby, what do you need? Number two says, when you begin a relationship, you have a number of expectations. Whether it's about how exciting you should, you should be, how available your partner should be, or how, how comfortable they should make you feel. But as the relationship goes on and circumstances change, you need to adjust your expectations as well. Okay, so I'm going to be real with you, ladies. Sometimes he may not be able to get it up. Men, she may not, the libido may not be there. You can't expect to bust her down all day, every day, because hormones fluctuate. Testosterone fluctuates. Sometimes a person just don't want it or they may not be in the mood, but it's okay to say, well, baby, what's up? Maybe, maybe she's too ashamed to tell you she's having hormone, hormone issues and she doesn't know how to say it. You know what I mean? Maybe she thinks you'll find some sweet little young filly out there because you may think she's too old and you want to put her out the pasture and vice versa. Thank goodness we don't have that problem. Okay, baby. You, you. We ain't going to get nasty on camera now. I'm trying to keep this thing nice and breezy, okay? Be good, Mr. Bendross. It's not so much that people change, but the circumstances of the relationships change. Then we change in response to that. You need to ask yourself, what are you expecting from your relationship? What are you expecting from each other? When you get married, guys, you got to go in talking. What are the expectations from this marriage? I'm expecting that we're going to grow together. We're going to go through and grow through. We're going to, oh my God, I just lost my point. We are going to grow through as we go through. Y'all just forgive me. I usually have this stuff done, but it's okay. And Derek Burgess has a question. Oh. Derek, I just got on here. Please don't cut up. Okay, I'm ready. Are there limits inside the bedroom? Derek Burgess wants to know if there's limits inside the bedroom. I personally don't think there's no limits inside the bedroom. I think as long as you two are consenting married adults, and if you want to try it, I say try it. That there's, there's no holes bars. You want to put a pole in your bedroom, swing around that thing, just make sure your, your, your foundation is structurally sound, that you don't tear down your, you know, your, your ceiling and stuff, but there's no hole bars in the bedroom. Eric, Derek just, just made me lose my talking point. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. I appreciate your support. Listen, guys, uh, I totally forgot to throw out my disclaimer. I am on Facebook Live as well as Z100TheBeat.com. So when you hear me go back and forth, I'm doing interactive radio. My Facebook listeners and viewers are also interacting. So um, is, is that expectation fair or is it reasonable or are you expecting something that your partner can no longer fulfill? 
if you know your partner is having impotence, impotence problems, if he's having problems getting it up, don't expect a man to give it to you nine days out of a week. And you know it's only seven days. Respect the fact that stuff happens. Respect the fact that certain medications, if you're on high blood pressure medication, sometimes that causes impotence as well, erectile uh, dis uh, dysfunction. And then sometimes some medications, uh, gentlemen, if she's not all, if she tells you she got a headache and she's not feeling good, you got to understand that. That's what marriage is about. You take the good, the bitter with the sweet. Y'all know that song by Jermaine Jackson. Don't take it personal. Take the bitter with the sweet. It's going to be all right. So, if, for example, if your partner used to make dinner every night, but recently got a promotion and he or she has to put in more hours at the office. Your expectation may not be reasonable anymore. So number three says you don't surprise each other. You know, I was looking for that song. I want you guys to go back and find it. It's called Make Time for Love. It's by Fred Hammond. It's a beautiful song. It tells you that you got to take time out of the day for love. I know we're all building CE. We're all CEOs and we're all building empires. We all are doing everything, but don't forget to look to that person who's right next to you. Don't forget you're not in this by yourself. Ladies, if he done put a ring on it and he putting that thing on it, don't forget to make time for love. Gentlemen, the Lord allowed you to find her. Don't forget to keep seeking her. Don't forget to keep seeking because what you do to get her, brothers, you got to keep doing that to keep her. Don't forget to surprise each other. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant, extravagant, but finding ways to surprise your spouse, whether it be a gift or a thoughtful act, can keep the marriage fresh, staving off those feelings of boredom. What do you need to feel love? Baby, what do you need to feel love? Let me tell y'all something. It could be running a bath. It could be making their favorite meal. Eric Bendross used to prepare getaways. I'm talking getaways, but since we got this pandemic going on, we're getting away in our house. We're romping around wherever we're going to romp around in this house, creating an atmosphere and an environment where it feels like you guys are at an oasis or you guys are on a vacation. What does your partner need to feel loved? It's okay to say, well, baby, what do you need? You know, marriage is about service. It's about putting the other person's needs first. It's not always about you getting your needs fulfilled first. It's about putting your partner first. Intimacy. Look for ways to surprise your partner, but surprise them based on their personality. Surprise them. You know, if you got somebody who, um, like me, I'm flashy, I like bling. It doesn't matter if the bling costs $5 or $500 or $5 million. I like bling. Give me something blingy. My husband loves the color red. Whatever it is, it's something red. This is, this is common knowledge. This is not something new. So, you know, this is not, oh, she's giving out tips how to get her, get her man. No, this is stuff already common knowledge. But you, you only you know that person, your best friend, better than you. Y'all know each other. Y'all around each other all day, every day. Surprise them with something that they like. Number four says you don't know each other's love languages. Let me tell y'all something. Love languages are something else. You got to know if your partner requires more touch than they do gifts. Or if they require just your attention, your time, just by hearing you say, I love you. Know your partner's love languages. Know how they speak when it comes to love. There are five love languages, words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. I'm going to say that again. There are five love languages, words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. Which one is your, is your spouse? Which one do you find that your spouse most responds to? Does she like a massage or does he like to be touched? Do they like to be held, kissed, and caressed? Do they like the fact that y'all just hold hands while watching TV? Or do they like for you to go out and buy them some gifts? Each person has two primary love languages that they describe how they feel love the most. The best way to treat someone isn't to treat them the way they, that you want to be treated. It's to treat someone the way that they want to be treated. If they say, well, you know what, baby, I require you to touch me. Put your hands on me. Rub me. 
Tell me that I'm desirable. When I'm walking past you, scoop my behind, feel on me, let me know. I don't want to be passing by Eric like two ships in the night. I want to feel on that bottom. I want to, listen, marriage is beautiful, but it's also self-fulfilling. What you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. Hi, Eric. Oh, okay. Interactions with your partner will be more, a lot more engaging and fun when you are able to fully understand how you each receive love. Go online and look up for the five love languages quiz. I've done it. My husband and I, we did it when we first got together. And let me tell you, it's very helpful to know. Bed sheet. It may just be letting, she may want to just put her head in your chest and just listen to your heartbeat. Sometimes that's the lullaby, to feel safe, to feel secure. I'm talking about how, how, to, how, to, how you can tell if your marriage bed is stale. How that marriage, if it's going awry. Gentlemen, you are the head and not the tail. You are the protector and the provider. But also, pray for her. Cover her. Cover her. Let me tell you, when you do those things, you'll get the best out of your wife. You hear me? You, you'd be like, oh, man. What? You'd be every day. You'd beat her down on bending knees. Come on, baby. We got to pray. <laughs> Come on, baby. Let me rub you down. Baby, listen. Let me love you down. Yes. That's what it's all about. You're not bonding with food. Let me tell y'all, food is the easiest and the sexiest way to bond with your partner. I was in the kitchen cooking yesterday, right? I felt like, you know what, I got a lot of stuff I got to do, but I got up and I went into the kitchen and I started making pepper steak. And it's so funny, as soon as I was dicing up the steak, Eric walks in and he goes, what can I do to help? I was like, what? He said, yeah, baby. What can I do to help? I want to spend some time with you in the kitchen. Whether you are cooking together or whether you're cooking for each other, whether you are serving each other or whether you're going out to try a new restaurant, food can be another great way to experience and express love. Cook together. You know she like lasagna like I know my sweetheart like lasagna. He going to have some lasagna and some homemade garlic bread. You know your husband love fried chicken, baby. Fry every part of that bird up and serve it to him. Make sure he have his hot sauce. And I'm not being racist because y'all know hot sauce go real good on chicken as well as mustard. <laughs> but what I'm saying, when you know your partner, when you know your partner and you know they love something, to me, I try to wear it out or add new things to it. Do new things. Keep it spicy. You equate romance to spontaneity. Sure, everyone loves to be swept off their feet by huge romantic gestures, but don't think the only way to your relationship will, will feel exciting is if you're acting on a whim, like the couples you see in I'm being very honest. Spontaneity costs money. Right, I, I know it's, it's great to go to the beach it's, and it's great to go to the movies, but sometimes y'all got to figure out how to be spontaneous at home, how to be spontaneous on a budget. Now, I'm not saying y'all some broke as a joke, people, but I'm just being very honest. It's not, it's just not realistic most of the time. In today's lifestyle, we have so many requests for our time. We must set aside time for our partner in our relationship. You can plan a vacation together. Then when you're there, you can engage in certain spontaneous activities. But you can't always go, go gadget. You can't always, you know, you save up some money and you automatically want to go spend it. That's not how it works. Gradually work your way towards it. But then also be spontaneous at home. I'm being very honest. Number seven says you've fallen into a daily routine. We wake up, it's missionary, shower, he go to work, he come back home, we eat dinner, missionary again. You know, you, you, you see how that goes? It's become so routine and humdrum that you know his every move. You know he like his coffee with two sugars. You give it to him and you watch him sashay out the door or vice versa. And it's like, oh, you, 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 it shouldn't feel that way in marriage. You shouldn't feel like humdrum bored. You don't lay down to wake up just to do it all over again. It's be like, oh, 
Good morning, pop kiss, no romance, no nothing. Try making love at 2 a.m. in the morning. Try doing, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not just trying to make it about love, but let me tell y'all something. I know people who actually write it down on the schedule. 12 noon, we having sex. 7 p.m. sex. If it's like that, well, you got you to gotta write down a schedule for sex, that's not going to work. Having a humdrum daily routine can make the relationship feel boring, stale, just dead. Try new restaurants, new hobbies, new places to visit. If you enjoy it, perfect. If not, laugh about it and vow to never do it again. Either way, getting out of your comfort zone ensures you won't be bored. Let me tell y'all something. This man right here, Mr. Bendross, y'all see run this, this program, I used to be one little boring sister, and I mean just that. I would wake up, <laughs> I would go to work, come home, cook, lay down, and do it all over again. So all of a sudden, he kind of snatched me out of my comfort zone, as y'all can see. Y'all see I, all the stuff I've been wearing. That's my, my wardrobe specialist, my hair, my everything. He is, he is responsible. I put, all I do is bring it to life with my personality, with my spirit. But it takes somebody to see, you know what, you got to get out of that comfort zone. It's not always good to be in that box. It's time to kick the lid off the box and break the sides down. Get out of that comfort zone. Hi, Mr. Bendross. Y'all, my, 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 my dad is telling me there's, there's something. How can I help you, sir? Uh, this sister Jacqueline says, uh, picnic in the living room with chocolate. Yes, honey, you better go, Sister Rich. Sister, listen, y'all, Rich Sister said, a picnic in the living room with some chocolate, covered strawberries. Listen here. Mm, mm, mm. Tell me something good. Yes. Tell me if you like it, baby. And uh, there, there's two things. That's just country, hot sauce and mustard. <laughs> <laughs> you country, Derek. You know that. And he also says missionary. What's that? Okay, so y'all know. Uh, slap it up. Slip it. Oh, so y'all, Derek says, because y'all know I make the statement hot sauce and mustard for your chicken, especially if your man like fried chicken. He say that's just country. I'm country. That's what it is. Missionary. He's saying, what is missionary? You got to smack it up, flip it, rub it down. Oh, no. Do me, baby. Maybe, you know what? Gentlemen, you shouldn't always be in charge in the bedroom. Let her be spontaneous. Let her, ladies, okay, I need you to get some heels. If you can't walk in heels, I need you to just put them on, show the man with your legs up, and then take them off. If you know you can't walk in them, just, just put them on, hold your legs up in the air, call them into the room, and be like, come on, daddy, and do it. But get you some wigs, ladies. If you know your bosom down low, get some, pick them up off the floor, and, and, and sit them up in the air, and let them go, ooh, take it off. And then, you know, I'm being very honest. Get out of that comfort zone. It's proven that those who do new things build do new things together, they build a cuddle hormone, oxytocin, and feel closer longer. Do something new. Missionary style, she always on her back and you on top of her. Yes, it's great to have, listen, it's good to have that knock down, drag down sex. Do it. Try it. She don't always want you on top. Let her climb on your pole sometimes. Let her slide up and down on you. And if she don't know how, teach her. Teach her how to please you. It's okay. Marriage is fun. It's amazing. That I, listen, I get to wake up to my best friend every single freaking day. I get to wake up and see his face. I get to, look, if he got crusties in his eyes, I get to kiss the crusties and vice versa. He get to get over and get the, you know, the drool line off my face. He sees me at my best and appreciates me at my worst. Do you hear me? That's what marriage is about. Seeing each other's flaws and all but be in each other's reflection. Y'all know that song by India Ari. If I am a, flex, a reflection of him, then I must be fly. Baby, if I had a call, I'd be popping it right now because I'm fly. Your man, you with your man, y'all loving on each other, baby, y'all fly. Love on each other. Stop being afraid to try new things. Bring food into the bread bedroom. Bring honey. Bring strawberries. Bring whipped cream. Bring some soup. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Bring something in there and keep it jazzy, keep it hot, keep it spicy. Ladies, girl, get you a thong. I don't care if you got a butt like Miss Butterworth. It's flat like a pancake. Put you a thong on. So what? Bend on over. Show him what he what you working with. Yes, Mr. Bendross. Jacqueline Plummer says, swing off the chandelier. Hey, Sister 
Sister Jackie say swing off the chandelier. Listen, I, I'm all for that, but make sure your, your structure is sound. That way we ain't tearing down nothing. But I agree, honey. I'm going to swing, honey. I'm going to swing from the pole. And I'm going to throw on a couple of different types of wigs. Keep it spicy. Keep it sexy, honey. Go lingerie shopping. You don't have to spin an arm and a leg. Go lingerie shopping, honey. Again, I say, if your bosom's down on the floor, so what, honey? Some men like to pick them up. Hello? And put them in their mouth. Yes, Mr. Bendrow. Woo, like the Seattle slew. Let her ride you like the Seattle slew. Derek says she can ride it like he a what now? Like he the bull. And he at the rodeo. Let me tell y'all, it's time to live your best life in your marriage. Live your best life. Stop being afraid. Y'all know mommy and them ain't gonna tell y'all what they did in the bedroom. They ain't got 15 kids for nothing. They ain't got 15 kids for nothing. I bet she done sat down on that thing. She just ain't tell you because she ain't want you to see her in that light. It's okay. You're not setting goals for your relationship. It's all right. You set goals for your career. You set goals for school. You set goals for the kids. You set goals for the weight. You want to lose weight. New year, new me. What about goals for your marriage? Any of y'all ever thought about setting goals for your marriage? Y'all, I'm watching the time to make sure I don't go over. Set goals for your marriage. When you get into a relationship, most couples establish goals together. But as time goes by, you reach those goals, it's pivotal to establish new goals to strive for. If not, you're bound to feel unenthused about the future. Y'all don't have any boundaries. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. Not boundaries, um, goals. It, again, it's going to feel humdrum. It's going to feel like O-M-G. Uh, ooh, you're going to look over at this man and be like, man, what, what was I thinking? What are you thinking? Why are we still together? Y'all got to grow through as you go through. Grow, set goals, reach milestones. We know children have developmental milestones, but guess what? Milestones need to be reached in marriage and not just the goal of staying together. Have something concrete to stand on. Continuing to encourage and support each other in reaching your goals, whether solo or as a couple, ultimately increases the love you have for each other. As um, happiness comes from moving toward what you want, not necessarily getting it. <clears throat> Is there something else you got to say, Mr. Bendros? Oh, okay, because he, he coming toward me, y'all. Love defunct, sir. So true. It's all about bedroom it is all about bedroom from, but I'm telling y'all how you know your marriage stale. How do you know it's like, oh my God, you see him coming toward you and you're like, oh, oh, oh. and you just want to nod off because you know it's just going to be the same old like watching paint dry. Hey, come on, ladies, don't just lay there on your back and come spread them. Ladies, come on, get up, dance for the man. I don't know how to dance, Nikki B. You talking about dance, girl, fake it till you make it. Put on some of that grunge and twerk. I ain't got the booty what they got on TV. Baby, shake it with, shake it like a salt shaker. Shake what your mama gave you. And that, I, look, I'm going to shake it till the man get dizzy and pass out just for watching the booty go. Brrr, let that booty, and then, and then walk it over to him and tell him to smack it. That's how you do that. Confidence. Say it again, Mr. Bendrop, for the people confidence, in the back. Confidence is the biggest Listen, y'all, y'all know I'm a plus size sister. I'm thick in all the right places. I'm stacked like a pack of, like a plate of pancakes. Do you hear me? But the beautiful part about it is I'm confident with it. You got to know how to, own, you got to own that. It's yours. Own it. And it's his too. You, you, you be so afraid that he watching the sister walk past. Don't be insecure. Be secure in who you are. I promise you, his eyes going to walk. Huh, honey, he may look at that little piece of me that she walking past, but he know he got prime rib. That's, that ain't nothing but a little chicken dinner. But he know he got filet mignon. It is what it is. You are priceless. You are gorgeous. You are sexy. And you are worth it. Gentlemen, oh, I got a little bill belly. My wife ain't looking at me. You know, my, 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 my genitals, you know, dangling almost behind the back of my legs. So what? You ever heard of a tea bag? Hmm, look it up. You're not sharing enough of your life with your partner. 
You're, if you're noticing that you feel a bit bored in your marriage, simply try sharing more. In order to bond with your partner, you must be willing to open up and be vulnerable. You got to share what's going on on the inside. That man can't read your mind, nor can that woman read your mind. Ladies, I can't stress this enough. If your man come to you and he hurting on the inside, don't call him a punk. Don't call him a wuss. Don't tell him to suck it up. Don't say stuff like that to your man. Don't do that. I'm going to say that again. Men need to be vulnerable too. Because the Bible says his heart does safely trust in her. This man coming to you and he telling you how he feel on the inside, and you're going to tell him to suck it up. No. <laughs> I had to catch myself. If he wasn't too busy sucking you up, maybe he could tell you what's going on the inside. I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all, see your husband as a person. He has feelings. He has emotions. Society has taught men, you got to be strong. You can't express yourself. Lies you tell. It's okay to take time to say, baby, I'm here for you. Tell me what's going on on the inside. Don't you know, ladies, we have that kind of power. The Bible in, P in 1 Peter, we have that, at, that advantage. We have the advantage when, when man won't listen to God, when our husband won't listen to y'all, he won't, when they won't listen to the most high, they'll listen to us. It's, it's our job to stay prayed up, to listen with discernment, to know what's going on with him. Because we ain't making nothing easy for the clean up woman over here. And I know some of my sisters ain't making it easy for the clean up woman. We, we done worked hard, we done groomed and been with our husbands and loved on them and built them up, not just for no heifer to come along and snatch them. Who has a listening emotional ear? Oh, honey, tell me what's going on. Oh, she doesn't deserve you. You got to learn to speak to that thing on the inside of that man. You got to learn to meet him right there. Get in that heart and rearrange it. Help him. Help him unpack some of that baggage. Because let me tell you, not all men come to us perfect. Some of them come, become, come wounded. Some of them may have whatever issues they may have. Just like we don't come to them all put together. That's what marriage is all about. You grow together. You grow together. Sharing can be, um, just allow your spouse to be vulnerable with you. Allow him to be vulnerable. I can't stress that enough because I know some brothers who are in so much pain and they just want to be able to lower their guard. Marriage is about, marriage is about, oh my God. See into me. Intimacy. See into me as I see into you. Y'all holding hands. This is a partnership. Y'all vowing to do life together. But your partner shouldn't be afraid to speak up. Your partner shouldn't be afraid to confide in you or to feel like you're going you gonna to beat them over the head or you're going to come down on them for feeling a certain way. That's not a marriage. That's a do as I say and not as I do. Ladies, allow your husband to express himself. And, and as a matter of fact, encourage him to express himself and vice versa. You don't want him out there telling the wrong person, oh, well, he don't appreciate you. Baby, I could treat you better. Because there are people out there who feel, there's even a song, I can love you better than she can. There are women out there who thinking that they can love your man better than you can. Or there's gentlemen out there on the sideline looking to sway your partner away, thinking they can love her and treat her better. No. Baby, I want to do all the things your man won't do. Come on now, let's be realistic. They even got songs about it. I'm going to need you to step up and encourage your husband. Gentlemen, I'm going to need you to step up and encourage your wife. When you say how you doing, mean it. If you tell her she beautiful, mean it. If she say, baby, why you love me, sit your hind paws down and tell her why you love her. If he say to you, baby, out of all the men, why did you marry me? Tell him. Marriage is about reassuring one another. Marriage is about being there, strengthening one another, upholding one another. I know y'all say, oh my God, Nikki B, you always come about relationships. Baby, I want you to live your best life. I want you to live your best life. 
Not by yourself. I want you to do this thing together. Now, if you choose to do it by yourself, that's on you. But I want you to live your best life. Sharing can be the exchange of information or of emotions. It can be sharing of experiences as well. Need a place to start? Try discussing some of your favorite shared experiences. Not only will doing so remind you of the great times, but it'll also open up and give you more ideas for your next adventure. Let me tell y'all, I didn't realize when I was marrying this light-skinned fella that I wasn't for the world, the, 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 <laughs> the ride of my life. I assume, you know, I'm going to be married. We're going to be getting it on. I didn't know that there were so many layers to him and vice versa. I didn't know. You know, I had, I had been, this is our second time around. My last time is our last time. The second time is so much better, baby. I promise you. It, it, it's a learning experience. It's like, wow, I knew that. I didn't know that about myself. When you in a marriage, when you're in a healthy relationship, it's some things you like, wow, I didn't know that. And it makes you strive to want to be a better person. It makes you strive to want to do things differently. It makes you strive to put that other person's interest first. Or you're basically joined at the hip. Yes, Mr. Bendra. All right, Love DuPont says, and congratulations, beautiful, 20 years of marriage. Oh, 21 years, listen here. You need to be on here giving me some tips about that because I love that. I love to see people do marriage and, and do it in a way where it's fulfilling. She says she on the spicy side of marriage, honey, the spicy side. Spicy, that's how you do it. Spice it up. Spice it up. You know what I mean? Oh, well, we done got too old, our bones cracking. Honey, my mom always say ain't nothing. And just because there's snow on the rooftop don't mean it ain't no fire in the furnace. Live your best life. Get some lube. Lube it up. Get some WD-40. Get you something putting on those knees and have a good time, honey. Get you a chair. Y'all know it's some, it's some sex chairs. If you feel like you can't get down on it like you want to, there's a sex chair. There's a lot of ways to get around those boundaries. You hear me? <laughs> what well, t y'all don't know nothing about tea bags look it up i promise you your husband will be like praise him hallelujah vice versa L listen listen i'm not afraid to tell you i'm not afraid to talk about sex look at me i'm going overboard i'm not afraid to talk about sex especially when it's in a union y'all done met what oh psh, what on the other side of that coin, don't be afraid to be your own person. Couples who spend too much time together can easily start to feel bored or even worse, frustrated. Y'all know we on lockdown. <laughs> we're under quarantine. And you're in the house with your spouse all day, every day, from sunup to sundown. And you're like, oh, my God, he's about to drive me crazy. And she and you about to drive him up the wall, too. Find different uh, uh, corners of the house and do stuff. Go out on the yard, do some gardening, do something. Try finding new hobbies of your own and experiencing things away from your spouse. Sometimes it'll only give you more time to share with them. Give you more things to share and make, make it more exciting when you guys reunite. Oh my God, I got only five minutes on Z100TheBeat.com. I feel so bad. Y'all, I feel like I be cheating my listeners. Listen, if you're on Z100TheBeat.com, log on to Facebook, and I'm still going to be going because I still have a, a, quite a few points to go to. Please log on. The brain craves novelty. Accepting the fact that things will feel boring sometimes is an important step in fixing the problem. After all, after all, novelty causes a number of brain systems to become activated. And foremost among these is the dopamine system. As you may recall, dopamine is that feel good hormone we're all after. But being able to recognize that your biological needs for novelty and responding accordingly will assure that you and your partner don't suffer. Every now and again, I want you to think back about your relationship. What's going on and what needs to happen so that you can make it more interesting? What's going on? What do I need to do? What can I do? Let me tell y'all something. I think my husband has the best job in the world because he's my costume person. I got about 50 wigs in there. <laughs> 50. 50, five, zero wigs. And I'm going to tell y'all, one day I just, I woke up, maybe it was the other night, I don't remember. I just, 
I got up and I said, well, I got to go in the closet for something. I came out that thing looking like a vixen. He said, woo -hoo. He got up and started clapping his hands like Hercules, 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 Hercules. Yes, honey, that's how you're supposed to do it. I came out that thing and then look and put on a show. Honey, you better shake them hands for that man. But that's what I did. I, I get, sometimes I just, I felt, I felt it. I felt like, you know what, maybe I need to change it up a bit. And it's okay to spice it up. I like to fool around with him. I like to, I like to, you know, that's my boyfriend. I like to fool around with him. I like to say, hey, where your wife at? Don't you tell her I've been here. And then I go in the closet and reemerge as myself. But I came out that thing looking like a vixen. I had them lips done a different color. I had them bosoms pushed up. Honey, that fella was like, woo, yes, God. Yes, we told the sheets down that night. Praise the Lord, we did. And I went back into the closet and I came back out with my satin bonnet and my robe on and he was just smiling like a Cheshire cat. Yes, Mr. Bendroth. Oh, okay, just checking. Number 12 says you're taking each other for granted. Oh man, I got one more minute on Z100Beat.com. You're taking each other for granted. Once you start feeling safe and secure in your relationship, that's when you get lazy, complacent, and yes, bored. Listen, just because you got that man and you, you done had him for some years, that don't mean you get to take him for granted. That don't mean you're going to all, he don't have to be there. You know, and he's not going to always be there. We grow old. We expire. You know, we don't know when the Lord going to call us home. But I want you to realize, don't take your spouse for granted. Don't neglect the fact that he get up and take out the garbage without saying thank you. Don't neglect the fact that he get your oil change, your brother, she in there cooking your food or vice versa. Don't neglect your partner. Don't do that. That's the worst thing you could do. Send your partner out there into the world feeling neglected and unappreciated. And he, and he happened to bump in the old slinky salad, all sawed off saw. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't want that. Y'all don't need that in your life. Oh, God. Babe, I got to get off. Guys, Z100, the beat. Uh, keep it locked. Uh, um, DJ Hot Rod is coming on. The struggle is real, but the journey is worth it. But I'm going to have to let you guys go. But find me on Facebook. Go back and press play what you've missed, guys. Okay. You can, you, you're, <laughs> you kind of stop making any efforts, both physically and otherwise. And we don't feel like we need to try the way we used to try in the beginning. Let me tell y'all something. The way Mr. Bendross got me walking through with his fine self sashaying through, he better sashay through and let me look at them hams all day, every day, or vice versa. What you did to get your spouse is what you need to continue to do. If you were spontaneous and you were loving and you did these things, keep the love alive. Of course, after years of building relationship with someone, it can be easy to think of what they can do for you and your family as a normal part of life. But it's important. I'm sorry, you, you need some? Okay. But it's important that you don't take your partner for granted and that you constantly express gratitude for those, for who they are and the impact they have on your life and happiness. You'll be surprised how much zest it can bring to your marriage. He bring you a glass of water. Say thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, baby. I like to say thank you, big daddy. I appreciate you. And mean it. Thank you. He done made you mad. Listen, if my husband get under my skin and, and he bring me something, I'm going to still say, thank you, sweetheart. I'm still mad at you, but I appreciate you. <laughs> it's okay to be that way. Number 13 says your sex life is unfulfilling or non-existent. Do I really need to re-go over that again? Because I think I hashed that out in the beginning of the show. But I can if some of y'all weren't listening in the back. Sexual boredom is a common plague on long-term relationships, especially marriages. It, can ha it happens because people kind of fall into patterns of having a sexual relationship, or it'll just be much less important. Oh, we'll have sex 7 o'clock in two weeks. I ain't in the mood. He not appealing anymore. He done got old. He gets his hair gray. However, whatever, whatever your rationale is for not having sex with your partner. I'm sorry, man. Bill Belly. Oh, he said beer belly. Whatever your rationale is for not having sex with your man, you wrong. Your body is his and his body is yours. And how dare you neglect to, to, to become one? How dare you neglect to come together and enjoy and explore and explode with one another? How dare you? If you don't want to do that anymore, let him go. Let her go. 
But if the love is alive, get in there and bust those sheets down until they're soaking and sopping wet. That's what you got to wash and dry for. Try voicing ideas with your partner and explore new ways to please each other. Just talking about sex can make your sex life a lot more exciting. Y'all at the dinner table, well, I can't wait to get you. I can't wait to take this, this whipped cream and put it all over you. Boy, I can't wait for you to flip me on my neck. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can hardly wait because I'm going to take you there. That's what that's to be about. I can't wait. We're talking about ways I'm identifying how your bedroom is stale and giving you tips how to unstale it. Technology, um, what did I say? Technology is consuming you. Listen, let, when I met my husband, can I tell him, Daddy? Go ahead. When I met Mr. Bendross, that man would be on his phone. It would irk my last nerve. He would wake up, be on his phone. He used to get four hours worth of sleep. I said, listen, this ain't going to work. She, the other woman, I can't deal with her. We're talking about the cell phone and the computer. Those were the other woman because you're taking the attention away from me. And I said to him, I require a lot of attention. I require a lot of uh, affection and I require a lot of your time. That's my love language. I require a lot. You hear me? He said, okay. That brother started taking that phone and putting it aside. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And thank you, Yeshua. You hear me? Is there a question? Well, a comment. Uh, so back when you had said about how uh, you go into the room and you be like, oh, uh, don't tell your wife. Yes, role play. Uh, yeah, role play. So love you, Tom said, OMG, I do the same thing. It's like flirting with him. LOL, it's fun. It is. Listen, I got this blonde bombshell wig. Honey, Eric didn't, he didn't see it coming. He said he heard me in the closet. He didn't know what I was doing, but he didn't know who I was going to come out as. And he was sitting there anticipating. He was clapping. Talking, ooh, 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 ooh. Yes. Have them. Have them on the. Uh, listen, make them toenails curl. It is okay to go down. Y'all, I don't like to talk about sex like that. But it's go down on the man. That's your husband. That's y'all. Y'all are one. I heard people say, I ain't going to eat nothing if that, if that I can't bake, boil, or fry. I beg to differ. You better go down on that man and, and sh suck his brains, suck him till his head cave in. Brother, you better eat her like you eating a, a, a Boston cream pie. It, it, it's, it's quite all right. I, I don't know where people get this myth that it's so wrong having this type of uh, sex in the bedroom. That's what it's there for. He cr God created that. He created that for, for married couples. Go on there, please, and love on one another. Oh, my God. Technology. Okay. In a nutshell, put your cell phone down. Put your iPad down. Pay attention to your wife. Pay attention to your husband. Put it down. If it's not for school and if it's not for work, put it down. You only spend time together as a family, not as a couple. I used to be guilty of this. It was always family night. It was always pizza and popcorn, this blah, blah, blah. But then I would be so tired for, for having family night, I didn't have, have time for couples night. Honey, Mr. Bendross pulled my coattail. He pulled my, he pulled it all. He said, hey, I love the fact that we spend time as a family. But it's time for you to get in here and spend time with Big Daddy. Oh, shoot. Look, what? What? Spend time as a couple. Make time for love. Make time for love. For love, holding hands, walking down the street. Listen, find that song by Fred Hammond. It's so beautiful. It, says, it simply says, make time for love. Make time for love. Check in with each other for at least 10 minutes every day. That can be done after you put the kids to bed or even put the phone away while you're both at work or as long as as long as you guys are sharing what happened with each other that day. Let me tell you, Eric, when we lived in, in Georgia, Eric, um, he telecommutes now, but he used to drive. He used to not do that before the pandemic. And he made it, he made it his business to text me every morning or we would, we would ride to work together. I would be on the phone with him and we would talk and talk. Even though he just left the house, he would say to me, I miss you already. 
that's the type of stuff that keeps marriage alive. It's like, wow. And the, and when I would be there, I would be tidy in the house or after I left school, I would have dinner ready. And it would just be such a, a, a marvelous thing. I'm not saying marriage is perfect because it's not. You're going to have your ups and downs, your hiccups, your good, your bad, the ugly and the indifferent. But the best part about it is that you guys are doing it together, together. Y'all growing together. Y'all creating memories, lasting memories. I want you to create those things because your children are watching and they're going to want that. They're going to say, you know what? My mom and dad built a long lasting marriage. I want that. Don't be in there arguing and fighting one another because then your children are going to emulate what you're doing. We're not doing that. You have the empty nest syndrome. Oh my God. <laughs> Y'all know uh, Eric and I, we still have one, our son still here. And I didn't realize how much I devoted my life to our son. And it's like children can consume a lot of your time and focus. And once they grow up and leave the house, you and your partner can feel like you lo no longer have nothing in common. It's like, wow. So I, I said to um, my husband, I said, when our last son, when he, when he, when our uh, Xavier decides he wants to leave the nest that next day, get our travel plans ready because it can be to the point where you have been fantastic parents, but then you forget how to love one another. You don't need that, that empty nest syndrome. You're like, Oh my God, what do I do next? Travel, date your spouse, enjoy each other. But rather than deeming your relationship boring without the kids, try to see it as a perfect opportunity to rekindle your romance. Um, now you don't have the distraction. You guys just have each other. I mean, it, it, here's the opportunity to go christen the whole house. It could be a very exciting time. It could actually be a very fulfilling time to do things that you couldn't do for a long time. You don't have to carry your baby bag nowhere. You don't have to, you don't have, to have snacks in your pocketbook. Everybody grown, they got their own life. Start living yours. Start living, start pouring more into your relationships. You've stopped expanding your social circles. It's easy to feel like you're stuck in a rut, not including people in your life besides your partner. So don't let your friendships fall by the wayside. But I'm gonna tell you, I have, I have there's a, there's a, to me, when you get married, your, your partner is your best friend. But it's also great to have bonds outside of that if, you, if they know if there's boundaries in place. It's okay to have certain friends, girlfriends, you know, ladies and guys. I, I don't believe in men having women friends. However, you know, some relationships are like that. However, again, boundaries should be in place. Make sure you have boundaries in place saying, okay, you know, you can talk to your friend. Because my husband still has uh, people in his life before me that he talks to, and it's no big deal. But we, we know that there's a time frame. Don't be calling here after uh, 10 o'clock at night. Come on, uh, I, I need, no, we're not doing that. Have boundaries in place. Your relationship with your partner will grow once you have other people in your lives. You can see things in another perspective like, oh uh, yeah, I don't want to live this way or I don't envy life that way. Or they can add to it like they can, sometimes people can give you a perspective if you and your spouse are having you know, whatever kind of squabble and then somebody on the outside calls in and shares an experience with you. It kind of puts life more into perspective. That's where I was going with that, guys. Your career overshadows your marriage. Obviously, a career is important. Yes, you got to pay the bills. You got to do what you love, but don't let it be all consuming. One of the easiest ways to make your career, to make sure your career doesn't affect your marriage is to avoid logging back on once you get home. That's the one thing I can tell you about my husband. He would get home. That was it. Work. He would leave that office and say, that's it. Work is work. Work is done. Talk to me. I'd be like, how was your day? It was good. Work is done. Once he got out of that building and into his car, that was it. He won't talk about work no more. No more. If, if, if that's not possible, set aside at least two to three nights a week that you are always devoted to your family. Number 19 says you're not putting energy into your relationship. Sometimes we go through that romantic stage and in about 18 months, we say, now what? You need to constantly reinvent and rekindle your relationship, especially developing emotional intimacy. If you don't know what intimacy is, it's holding hands, it's cuddling, it's kissing, it's talking, it's conversation, rubbing feet. It's just, 
being seeing into me, into me, see me, intimacy. As time passes in your relationship, be more deliberate about giving your marriage the care and attention it deserves and needs even after the butterflies die down. Eric and I did a show called Checked In, and let me tell y'all, it just, it just felt like everything was, was, you know, I just felt like I didn't have it anymore. He didn't know that. I didn't express it to him until we got on camera. <laughs> Is it okay to share that, honey? He didn't know. Because I didn't know how to express it. And then when they were talking, it's like, I feel like I don't have it anymore. I need to know that when I walk away, bam, his eyes on me and that I still got it. And, and, and I didn't realize the producers were listening. It was like, wow. And, it, and they turned it into a learning experience for Eric and I where we learn how to communicate more. Baby, I'm not feeling my best. I'm not feeling super sexy. He said, go look in the mirror. Tell me what you see. And then when I come out, he'll tell me what he sees. It's like, wow. Intimacy. Not everybody got to know your insecurities. Not everybody got to know. It's only the person who you are married to. And if you seek therapy, yeah. But other than that, you too. <clears throat> you like a connection with yourself. When you're feeling bored in your marriage, it's easy to point fingers. It really is. It's your fault. You look what you did this. You did this. No. However, there could be some internal issues, internal issues that are affecting how you interact with your partner. Are you feeling depressed? Are you having stresses at work? What's going on with you that you feel like you are not connecting with your partner? What's causing that disconnect between the two of y'all where that spark is not feeling right? Being able to reconnect with yourself can allow you to reconnect with your partner too. You feel like Maybe you don't have any purpose. Maybe you feel like you don't know your own personal goals. You got these beautiful goals set for the marriage. But what are you doing personally for you? Sit down and map out what you want to see happen for you. I'm sure when you and your spouse get together, you guys are on one accord because they only want what's best for you. And then 21 says you assume you've outgrown each other. Some people think that when you're in a relationship for a long time, you will inevitably outgrow each other. That's hardly the case, y'all. That's not true. Don't assume having a boring relationship is inevitable. Once you remove that mindset, you'll bring positivity back into a relationship with your partner. It's a little bit uh, a scary problem to talk about at first, that you feel like you guys are, are getting bored with each other or you feel like you're getting stale. But if you are aware of the problem and if you want something else, then you have to talk about it. And for um, <clears throat> you just have to be willing to work together and be willing to put in the work. Marriage is not easy. Marriage is another job. Yeah, I know you work 40 hours. I know you're probably a student. I know you're probably a parent. But marriage in itself is a job. But it's very fulfilling. It, communication is key. Communication. Confidence, trust, vulnerability. It's something about being in a relationship where you feel safe, where you feel like nobody's going to judge you for feeling the way you feel or, or, or for not having it all together right then. Growing together, goals, oh my gosh, building. I often say building an empire, but your marriage Never forget to make time for love. All right, guys, this has been Say What Wednesdays. I am your host again, Nikki B, the elegant and regal one. <laughs> Eric says the elegant and regal one. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope um, this message touched your hearts, your mind, and your spirits, and it, it, it will propel you and encourage you to do better in, in, um, in your marriage. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Is there any other comment? Love you, Punk says, my two children left home to make a life on their own, and it's just hubby and I living our uh, living home. Our relationship is wonderful, and yes, there are times we have a misunderstanding, mm -hmm. but we talk about it. But our marriage isn't boring. We always try to make it fun and enjoyable. I love that. Love DuPont. Thank you. I appreciate your input. I appreciate everybody's input on this show. Guys, I would like for you to share this broadcast. Uh, follow me on uh, YouTube, click like and subscribe, 
Follow me on Nikki, Nikki, uh, the Nikki B show, Nikki Vendross plus size model. Listen, I'm doing so many things I never thought I would do all because I, the Lord allowed me to be found by the right one. It's amazing when you being loved by the wrong one, you, you doing some things, but when a God allows you, when y'all blesses you to be loved by the right one, OMG, the sky is the limit to what I can have. All right, guys, have a blessed one. <laughs> Let's close us out. Yes, we're going to end the video. We're ending the video.